Hey guys, we are back updating the Power Rankings for Survivor UK following week seven. And this season has actually been pretty interesting, all things considered. I feel like this has been a mostly strong post-merge. We had two really fun episodes here. And obviously we are now down to the final five. I can't believe we're already at this point in the season. And I feel like there's still a little bit of intrigue over what could happen here, but we'll get to that more in a moment. But there are seven players to talk about. And let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into the video. So starting off at number seven, we have the first booth from this week. And here we have Lawrence. And this was definitely an interesting round for Lawrence to say the least, where I had already talked about him last week for him being kind of behind this whole flip, him telling Tanuke about the plan, only for him to just try to save face by throwing his foe on the peg like here. And while I wasn't quite expecting this to take place, I feel like it largely made sense by the time Tribal happened. We're obviously the two biggest targets in the game, and Chris and Nathan are both safe through immunities and idols. And while the initial thought would be that they would split the vote onto Leilani in order to weaken Nathan, it does seem like, well, one, they don't really consider that. Also, we know that Nathan was aiming towards taking out Lawrence as an alternative to Chris. And I feel like at the end of the day, like, it's all a way of weakening the Chris and Matt side over there. So I feel like that's pretty interesting for Hannah and Pegleg to be in that swing vote position, obviously being the ones to take them out. And I feel like in general, Lawrence played an interesting game on this season, where even though there were points where he was at the bottom, such as early on, also post swap, he was blindsided at the shy vote. He did still have some agency across the season, like where he was obviously a big factor in this Doug and Tanuke blindside. I feel like that was at least something you can, give, you can give him credit for. And I think he got some solid content during parts of the season. But at the end of the day, I feel like he wasn't quite my top contender for most of the season. But obviously, he is now out of the game, which is why he is here at number seven. Now, moving on to number six, and we have the other boot from this week. And here we have Nathan. And I feel like this was about Nathan's time to go. I feel like he had been such a big target for a lot of the game. Obviously, he loses control of the Tanuke vote and was a big target last round, only for him to be able to find the idol due to Matt's mistake that allows him to be safe at the final seven round. But I feel like by this point, yeah, it makes sense for him to go out here. And I feel like Nathan was a pretty interesting figure across the season as well, was obviously in a dominant position for a lot of the game, though at the same time, like, was someone who got some interesting content in his edit, where I was kind of conflicted over how winnery it felt, where we had we definitely get a lot of his perspective in terms of his relationships early on, same thing with his competitive spirit, and I feel like he was being a take, taken more seriously than someone like a Lee, so at the same time, I feel like other people had better edits than him, and I feel like by the end he was such such a blatant threat to where he couldn't really get too much further in the game. And obviously he is taken out here. And again, I do like Nathan. I feel like he is someone who would be interesting to see play again. But obviously he is now out of the game, which is why he is here at number six. And with that, there are five players left in the game to talk about. And as usual, I'll be ranking them based on how likely I think they are to win based off their edit in current game position. But number five, the person I believe is the least likely to win from this point on is still Leilani. And again, I feel like Leilani's mostly drawing dead at this point, where I did have a pretty low last week. And I feel like this week just was more of the same here, where I feel like gameplay wise, she's obviously been pretty out of the loop during the last couple of rounds, where she obviously is blindsided at the Nathan vote, where obviously she loses Nathan. But even during the Lawrence round, she throws her vote on the peg leg, which I find kind of humorous. And obviously she's just continuing to not vote correctly, continuing to not even be aware of what's happening in the game. And I feel like edit wise, she doesn't really have it either, where I feel like we're not getting much of a storyline for her to potentially win the game in the future. I feel like most of her content is pretty baseline. I feel like the show doesn't really take her seriously at all. And I feel like the jury doesn't really take her seriously at all either. So again, I feel like Leilani is the one person that I'm very confident will not win the season, which is why she is here at number five. Now I'm moving on to number four, and I actually had this person fairly high last time that I talked about them. But I feel like after seeing the content from this week, I feel like I have to drop them at this point. But here we have Christopher. And obviously Christopher is all over the episodes this week, where obviously he is working alongside Matthew where they're trying to get the idol from the lobster trap. They pull off this whole scheme only for Matthew to mess it up and ended up in Nathan's hands instead. He obviously is someone that talks about needing to win immunity, is able to do so during episode 13. 
And moving forward, like he is obviously shown being a relatively big threat as well. Long time Matthew. There is a shot that they could have been targeted there, though they're not. So obviously he is able to get through this and he is one of the bigger characters on the season. And he is someone who throughout a lot of the season I've been relatively high on. However, I feel like after seeing this batch of episodes, I'm not feeling that great about him anymore from a game standpoint, where we did get that confessional from Hannah in a, the latest episode where she says that the jury hates Christopher. And I feel like upon like looking at the grand scope of the season, I think it's starting to make more sense. I feel like Christopher is someone who is probably not going to be respected if he gets towards the end of the game. Where obviously we know that a lot of the original Lenenas are not too happy with him due to the way that he was flipping and the way that he was playing the game earlier on the pre-merge. I feel like a lot of the Kalatons are not going to respect him either. Again, due to the him like taking them out, I feel like Christopher is not going to garner much respect because of that. So at this point, even though Christopher is one of the bigger characters on the season, I can actually see him losing at the end, which is pretty crazy to think about. But again, I feel like if it were to happen, I would 100% see it taking place. And I feel like with the way the edit's going, I feel like I'm feeling less and less confident about a Christopher win, which is why he is here at number four. Now I'm moving on to number three, and I feel like this person's less likely to get to the end than Christopher, but I feel like they still managed to get somewhat interesting content, and here we have Pegleg. And obviously Pegleg is someone who has continued to get an interesting edit across the season. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a big edit, as even this week, like he doesn't get too many confessionals. We still get some interesting confessionals from him about wanting to sit back after he wins immunity. He talks about wanting to get Chris out. He talks about his loyalty to Hannah. And I feel like those are all things that kind of work in his favor. Now, at the end of the day, I still feel like he's someone who will probably be taken out towards the tail end of the season, especially with him now winning the final six immunity. I feel like he's the type of person who at the first opportunity he doesn't have immunity, he's probably going to be taken out due to this perception that he might win a jury vote at the end, though I'm not entirely sure whether he actually will, we'll have to see what happens, but I feel like he is someone who at least has more win equity than someone like a Christopher, but I feel like they're probably not going to get to the very end, which is why I do have him here at number three. Now moving on to number two, and I feel like this is a pretty clear top two. I feel like one of these two people will probably win the season. It's just a matter of ordering them. And there's definitely a debate for each of these people being number one. However, I did decide to go with Matthew here. And I feel like Matthew had a pretty interesting week here where early on, like he is obviously working alongside Chris, where they obviously find the key to the idol that's hidden in the lobster trap. And they actually have like an interesting idea in wanting to hold on to the key, but still keeping the idol in there so people don't get suspicious, except Matthew ends up not securing the lobster trap, which allows Nathan to steal it, which I find really insane. But it's also one of the highlights from this week from an entertainment standpoint. But moving forward, like he's still getting somewhat decent content where obviously he is able to remain in the majority and obviously he's obviously a big factor in taking out Lawrence here, though I will say that from a pure game standpoint, I do find that move a bit questionable as I feel like Lawrence was closer to Matt and Christopher than Leilani was. And I feel like they would have been better off trying to either split the vote on Leilani or trying to get someone else out. But again, it's not the end of the world for their game. And then obviously at the final six, we see like them be able to win the day by getting Hannah and Peg like on their side to take out Nathan there. So obviously like coming to this final five, they are in a somewhat interesting position here where you would think that now that they gotten out Nathan, their plan is to take out like Peg like or Hannah, break up that duo with Lilani as a swing vote there, which again, I think the fact that they took out Lawrence probably isn't great considering that position that they're in though. I feel like there's still a shot that they can be in that spot and plus for Matt in particular, I mean, he still has Chris, who is a bigger threat compared to Matt. So I feel like he should be fine coming into this final five round. And I think in terms of win equity, if he were to get to the end, I think he's still kind of in a hairy spot where obviously the Calatons are pretty mad at him. Nathan and Tanuke feel betrayed by Matt over his decision to flip. So I do question whether he'll actually be able to get their jury votes by the end of it. 
But I feel like compared to Chris, I feel like Matt is someone I have a bit more faith in winning a jury vote compared to Chris, even with that issue that holds me back from putting him higher on the list. And again, I feel like the number one person, while their edit hasn't been in as consistent as Matthew's, I still feel like they have a shot to win the game as well. And I feel like at this point in the season, I am leaning more towards that other person than Matthew, which is why I do have him here at number two. And now at number one, the person I believe is the most likely to win Survivor UK right now is Hannah. And I feel like if this were Survivor US, I would not be as high on Hannah, obviously, as I feel like her edit earlier on wasn't as great. Now, yes, there were some solid confessionals in the pre-merge that made me perk my ears up a bit. I feel like compared to people that I had higher earlier in the season, those people had more well-rounded edits compared to Hannah. But obviously, these people are now out of the game, which makes me question why they were edited that way. And I feel like in a lot of ways, it reminds me of Survivor South Africa, where obviously that show focuses more on what's happening within the game versus trying to tell a season long story. And I feel like if Survivor UK is trying to edit its show more similarly to Survivor SA, I think that gives Hannah a pretty solid advantage to actually win the game. Where this week, I feel like she gets some solid content here talking about like wanting to flush the idol, talking about the dynamics of the game. She obviously has her relationship with Peg Light that's pretty set up well. We obviously have people like a Chris and a Matthew who are technically running the game right now, though at the same time, like she herself gets to weigh in on the fact that Chris is someone that the jury doesn't like. And she was obviously the swing boat during this most recent round to take out Nathan here. And I feel like by her saying that Chris is hated by the jury and then proceeding to keep Chris in the game, I feel like that's actually pretty good for her edit wise. The fact that she is being propped up for that. And I feel like coming into this final five round, she is kind of in a rocky spot where it's basically now going to be this battle between these two duos here. Though, again, I feel like Peg Leg is someone that's more likely to be taken out compared to Hannah in that spot. I feel like Hannah has been able to have good relationships with Chris and Matt to the, where they'll probably keep her around. I feel like Leilani is also someone that's going to be closer to Hannah and Peg Leg compared to Chris and Matt as well. So I feel like Hannah is actually in a solid spot coming into this final week of episodes here. And I feel like if she gets to the end, I actually have some faith that she can actually win a jury vote at the end. Now, I will be doing a jury scenarios video later this week, so I'll talk about that more then. But I actually feel pretty good about Hannah at this point, where even though her edit was kind of slow to start off, I feel like it's been picking up. And I feel like with the fact that this is not Survivor US, in that obviously there's a bit more wiggle room and the trend that they're going to be going for here. I'm actually willing to give Hannah the benefit of the doubt here. And because of that, I do have her here at number one. And there we go. That will do it for this week's video. If you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe. Really helps out the channel. And I'll be back again next week to update the power rankings again. So you can stay tuned for that. I am wrapping up my coverage of the Amazing Race 35 with my team ranking that will be coming out after the season ends. But obviously, I'm still covering Survivor 45. So you can stay tuned for that. Like I said, I'm going to be doing a jury scenarios video for this season coming up, so you can stay tuned for that as well. And obviously, once the season is over, I'm going to be doing a player ranking for that, so you can stay tuned for that. I'm on Patreon now, so you can consider supporting the channel by clicking the link in the description. And you can also join the Discord server by also clicking the link in the description. There's a lot of stuff coming your way. But for now, that's the video. See ya.